Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! But we move from one well-trodden path to another now because there's a poll published, you may have seen it yesterday, about the burqa. Probably the most controversial item of clothing since... <sighs> leggings? I don't know. Um, the point is that more than half of Britons, according to this poll, would like to see the Prime Minister follow the example of France and order a ban on clothing such as the burqa that covers the whole face and body. You can't really have a ban on clothing that covers the whole body. I, I know the burkini has reached fever pitch in France, but that, that'll all calm down. It, it, you've got to remember that local politicians are even more uh, fallible than the national level politicians. And, and the, 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 I mean, it's terror. That's what terrorists do. They don't just kill people. They create terror. That's why, why, why it's a different crime from other murders and other killings. It's, it's not just about killing the victims. It's about creating terror in the minds of the survivors. And the response to the terror is often to uh, address people who aren't responsible for it. So when the Burkini thing was being debated a couple of weeks ago, I really, I, I mean, I, I don't know if balked is quite the right word. Despaired is probably closer when you make the point about the nun, which is just the end of the debate. How would you feel if a nun was ordered to take her clothes off on a beach? That's the end of the debate, I, unless you say I'll be comfortable with it, in which case that's fine. I, I don't have an argument with you. You want all religious associated clothing to be outlawed, you can. That's fine, as long as it's all, but you can't do it based on religion. But then people think a valid response to the question of what's the difference between a nun in a habit and a woman in a burkini. A, a valid response is, oh, nuns aren't trying to blow us up. <laughs> Pardon? And that, that is, that's it. That's, that's mission accomplished for ISIS. Seeing all Muslims want to blow us up, even the ones that are getting blown up, even the ones that are getting killed, even the ones that went under the wheels of that lorry in Nice. Yeah, they're all against us. So what's the difference between a nun in a, in a habit and a, and, a, and a Muslim in a burkini? Oh, well, the, the nuns aren't trying to blow us up, but nor is the sunbather. The history of terrorism is not exactly littered with people in swimsuits, is it? Oh, anyway, so that's, that's where you know logic has gone out of the window, when people respond by saying, well, nuns aren't trying to blow us up. But we're not talking about the burkini today. We're talking, I think, very specifically about the covering of the face, okay? That, that, that's uh, the one that, um, uh, that I want to focus on, the banning of clothing that covers the face. And 57% of people in this survey, I don't think it was a particularly big survey, but I don't personally have a, uh, um, a problem with the findings. I think it probably is pretty close to the truth. The notion that the, um, uh, the face covering is somehow something that should be addressed by law. There's no prizes for guessing how it breaks down on age. The older you get, historically, the more susceptible you are to fear, the, more, the easier you are to be frightened. Um, so support for a burqa ban is highest among the over 65s, where 78% back prohibition, only 12% are opposed. You go down to the youngest end, 18 to 24, you've still got 40% against uh, against the ban and 34% in favour. So it's pretty close even at the young end, but it's unclose. It's utterly, utterly over the line at the older end of the scale. Women are about as likely to support a ban as men, so it doesn't break down on gender grounds. Now, I, I make, it's quite odd, really, how nuts the debate about Islamist terrorism has become, because I can sit here now and say to you, my only position is that innocent people don't get punished for the actions of guilty people. That now has become controversial, to suggest that we don't punish innocent people, or even to suggest that you're innocent until proven guilty. So, uh, a little glance at social media, although I, I wouldn't advise it, you'll find plenty of people who think that it is somehow controversial of me to suggest that we shouldn't punish innocent people. Which means the terrorists have succeeded in the minds of a lot of people in Britain. They've succeeded in undermining one of the most central tenets of our rule of law, which is the concept of innocence until proven guilty. So the first achievement for Al-Qaeda or ISIS or whoever we're talking about today, the first achievement is the one that has been reflected uh, in the minds of British people, we no longer believe in being innocent until proven guilty. If you're a Muslim, you must be guilty. So, well done, ISIS. I, I, thankfully, there are still people like me around who insist that you are innocent until proven guilty. But that makes you an apologist or a terrorist sympathizer or a supporter. I, honestly, it's so blindingly simple to understand this. You have to conclude that people who don't understand it just don't want to. They want to be full of hate and anger. Here's the deal. 
Innocence until proven guilty is one of the most beautiful and fundamental precepts of British law. And you don't like it anymore because of what terrorists have done. So who's doing what they want and who's standing up to them? See? It's not difficult. But then we come to the burqa, where I've got a massive problem. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. It is an item of... It's more than an item of clothing. It is an affront to everything I hold dear. Absolutely everything I hold dear. I hold dear equality, I hold dear freedom, I hold dear tolerance, I hold dear seeing the best in people, the presumption of, inf uh, presumption of innocence, I, I, and, and I think it's dehumanizing as well. I think it is a massive, massive obstacle to integration. There's no earthly way I can feel the same about a neighbor whose face I've never seen. I, obviously, there are always little red herrings you can throw in about visual impairment and blindness, but you know what we're talking about here. We're talking about how, whether or not you can have a feeling of fellowship with someone whose face you've never seen, someone who feels the need, especially if you're a man, someone who feels the need to cover their face from you. And it, and it is, it's profoundly oppressive. We have no way of knowing how many women, when they tell us that they wear it through choice and no one's ever coerced them, some of them are telling the truth, but I think they've almost been subconsciously coerced. But, I mean, even, even to wake up in the morning and think that this is a good idea means you've been a victim of oppression and coercion. I, even if you think it is an autonomous decision to cover your face, it isn't. You've been completely conditioned by the environment you're in, and the environment that you're in is teaching you that men can't control themselves or that men are somehow suspect. <sighs> And then, oddly, just in the back of my mind, I've got that Jeremy Corbyn yesterday calling for women-only train carriages, and I'm wondering, are we really that different? Just in different ways. So I bow to nobody in my dislike, my disapproval, my disgust at what this garment represents. The difference between me and your average racist, of course, is that I don't hate the woman who's wearing it. Quite the opposite. I feel nothing but sympathy and pity for her. Even when she doesn't want it, even when she accuses me of patronising and insulting her, I still feel sympathy and pity for her. It is not, for me, evidence of any sinister mindset or any sinister ambitions. It's evidence of victimhood. It's awful, awful to have been raised or to have ended up in an environment where you can even contemplate covering your face. So I think I've been pretty clear about my feelings regarding this garment. I have done before many times. But I can't get across the line that calls for a law. I just can't. Because it's about universality, and I don't believe that 57% of people would have supported the motion that the police should have the power to tell you to take your clothes off. Should the police have the power to tell you what you can and can't wear? I, I can't get over that line, and I don't think that I want to. So where are you on this? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Emma's unhappy with my earlier comment. She says, "You leave my neon pink leggings alone. There's nothing wrong with them at all." Well, uh, that's obviously not necessarily for you to say, Emma. Twelve eleven is the time. Phone lines are open. Get get in quick on this. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. I've only spoken to two or three women in my life who were wearing a face covering, and um, except on the phone, of course. I've spoken to more here, but I, I, I couldn't in all conscience tell you that, that they seem to be particularly oppressed or particularly exploited. It, it, it's the garment that is insidious, not, not the wearer. And oddly, at uh, one occasion, uh, so there was a, uh, an airport, must have been, I've never been to the Middle East, so it must have been coming back from Singapore or somewhere like that, and an Arab family, and she had a net over her eyes, so she didn't just have a slit, but she even had a, a, a net over her eyes. And I, we were, I was sitting in Burger King, at, I think it was Bangkok Airport, might have been Kuala Lumpur, that's more likely, isn't it? At Kuala Lumpur Airport. And I thought, what's going to happen? How is she going to eat her burger? And she just pulled the whole thing off. And her husband was there and her kids were there. She just pulled the whole thing off out of burger and put it back on again. So, you know, they're, 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 it's not black and white. It's not binary. But I can't... Can't call for a law. I just can't. That's not a country I want to live in, where the authorities can tell me what to wear. So, when 57% of British people said, yes, I think we should ban the burqa, I'm pretty confident they were not saying, yes, the police should be able to tell me what I can and can't wear. So where are you on this one? Hit the numbers now, you will get through. Ryan's in Camberwell. Ryan, what do you think? Uh, hey, yeah, I just feel like um, Muslims are systematically beginning to become dehumanised. Yes, I agree. Um, if, you look, if you take China, for example, um, in China, Muslims are banned from fasting, 
because they associate fasting during the month of Ramadan to be extreme. Um, now how can so you ban fasting? You can't ban yeah. fasting. I, I, I knew I knew you were just going to ask that question. Actually, they do. So certain people who, who work in um, sort of government roles, they're sort of observed um, and checked on for making sure that they do eat and drink. And I've actually read in a BBC News article. But that would that apply to everybody. Dying. If you and I were there and we weren't Muslims and we were we were uh, not eating our food, that, that's that's the point. It might seem like an oppressive policy, but if it applies equally to everybody, you can argue that it isn't. Well, 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 the thing is, is that it's not just, these are particularly in the workplace, they focus on people who are in government yeah, positions. But, but in, in people's homes, I've read a BBC News article that in fact the Chinese police actually go into people's homes and actually, you know, check on them to make sure that they're... Mate, they're we're talking there. about burqas in Britain, not fasting in China. I, I accept yeah, your point well, about dehumanisation, but do you, do you, hang on a minute. No, 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 it, I'll decide what's relevant and what isn't. We've got enough to talk about without bringing in Chinese fasting. I agree with your point about dehumanisation, but I think it's probably contributed to by the burqa, oddly. Okay, what can, what so can be more dehumanising than to cover your human features? Well, the thing is, is that you have to understand that certain religions have certain practices and oh, really? implementations. So, oh, yeah, okay. So, so I didn't know that. Wear the burqa, women who wear the burqa do it for religious reasons. Right. So say, for example, you might be under the impression, because of your lack of knowledge on Islam, yes. that it's, it's oppressive and it's misogynistic. Is that is that perhaps maybe your opinion? Oh, you tell me, Ryan. You're the one with all the answers. No, no, it, it's, it's your opinion, so I'm asking you. So is that the case? I, I believe it's profoundly oppressive, yes. Okay, so when they banned me in the car in France, was it angry Muslim husbands who were protesting because my wife should be able, I should, no man should be able to look Yes, at it wife? was. Or was it, or was it Muslim women who it, were it was mostly the It was mostly wife? the angry men. No, it's not. Where did you get that from? That's the BBC absolute website. Nonsense. That's absolute, well, BBC website, okay. That's absolute nonsense. It was Muslim women going out and defending their right to be able to cover up their face because they consider it a religious duty. There's a difference of opinion amongst the scholars as to whether or not it's an obligation. So some scholars say that. Should we try uh, again? Should we try again? What do you think the word dehumanizing means? I think dehumanizing is a systematic process where you actually, where you make the people and the society around not actually really value the rights and lives. No, that's not what dehumanizing means at all. No, that, what, okay, you tell me what it means. Dehumanizing means trying to create a section of society that is considered somehow second class and different okay, and so that, fundamentally... Is that, is that, is that, so, hang on, mate. Is this, yeah, you're, you're, you're getting this for free, saying. Ryan. You're getting a scholar for free now, mate. Seriously, you don't, you don't have to turn up for, for, for a meeting or anything. So what, so what happens is you somehow manage to cast them as so fundamentally alien from the rest of society that you open the door to discrimination and dehumanization. And I, off the top of my head, can think of no better way to dehumanize a human than to cover their human features. Can you? But you, but you don't consider it the same to actually tell them that what they can and can't wear. So, so Ryan, my friend, I asked, you, I asked you a question. Can you think of something more dehumanizing than hiding your humanity? How is, hiding, how is covering part of your face taking away your humanity? Your, your, face is, your face is your only identifying feature as a human. The only way you can tell two humans right. apart from each other is by their face. So can you think of anything that's more dehumanizing than covering your face? I most definitely can't know. In fact, no, nor can I, mate. Reason. So finally, we're in agreement. And that, my friend, is scholarship. And what a time to be alive it is. Uh, back to the question of whether the 57% of British people who would be in favour of a ban on the burqa would actually have also been in favour of a motion suggesting the police should be able to tell them what they can and can't wear. I suspect not. I made my opposition to, to this garment, my deep, deep disdain for it, pretty clear. But I can't see how anyone would want the law to enforce this. Julian makes a point that we've heard before, actually, in the context of the burkini, but we'll, we'll apply it here as well. He says, if I was a naturalist, I think you mean naturist, and wanted to walk around in public without any clothing, would that be acceptable, even though I would not be hurting anyone? Surely you have to comply with what is generally socially acceptable. No, you don't have to comply with what is generally socially acceptable. You have to apply, comply with the law. I mean, the law is, at the moment, that public nudity is not... Um, allowed. That's why the Naked Rambler spent so much of his time in prison. I think he was in the news again in the last couple of days. And, and most of us, when we discuss that, are pretty comfortable if he really must walk around in the altogether. Uh, it's just some people object to the idea that he might come near children. They think there must be some sort of sexual element attached to nudity. Go to other European countries, you'll see people um, uh, pretty much in the altogether sunbathing in the park on a hot day. It, it's only the British post-Victorian approach to sex that associates nudity with, with sexuality. But, your point works only if nobody's allowed to do it. So, 
it, in the context of the burkini, you use the, the naturism or the nudism point, yeah, that, that's fine if it applies equally to everybody. So if, if, if me as a Christian, if I was allowed to wander around naked, but you, because you're a Jew, were not, that would not be fair. And that's where the burkini problem comes in. It only applies to people of a certain religion. And, and you don't have to go that far back in European history to remember what generally happens when you bring in laws specific to the population's religion. So if people get treated differently by law according to their religion, Religion. One doesn't want to invoke Godwin's law necessarily at this point, but I think you can fill in the gaps yourself. So that just doesn't work, unless it applies equally to everybody. And if it applies equally to everybody, then you're going to have problems like this one, which I've lost, but I think it came, I'll find it, who it came in from. I'm a male atheist, but if they ban the burqa, I will start wearing one. Here you go, here it is. If this country, says Alan, um, if this country bans the burqa, I will start wearing one. And I say this as an atheist man. I find it disgusting that people want to ban an expert of faith that harms no one. This country is heading for fascism, he writes. I can't think off the top of my head of any evidence of that from the last few minutes, can you? Well, we'll see. Uh, Layla is in Woolwich. Layla, what would you like to say? Oh, hello, thank you for taking my call. I'd just like to say that I've never actually seen a, a burqa until the war that happened in, in Afghanistan. I've never seen in the streets of Britain until then. I saw them in and Knightsbridge in the 1970s. Well, uh, very nice, but I've never seen, come across them, and it's a very select few people, and it's actually quite a percentage of society that wears them in the uh, Muslim community, and even then, they're not uh, whether to take it off or not. It's I, 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 I see one every day, pretty much, as, as I make my way around central London. I think Going I think back through really Shepherd's Bush and Hammersmith, uh, pretty much every day. Uh, more than one, actually. But you're right. I mean, as a, but that's not the point. I don't care what the percentage is. It's the principle that yeah. we're discussing. Okay. Uh, what's more dehumanising than having your face covered? I think let's look at the other side. We have a, a society now in Britain where young young uh, children and as, as uh, young as three on a two-piece bikini. I mean, I think it's all about choice. If you have a choice to your own child. Your, 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 phone, your, phone, your phone line's cutting in and out. What's wrong with a child wearing a swimsuit? No, it's not a swimsuit. I said it's two-piece bikini. Yeah, what's wrong with that? It was really... Well, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a choice. That's a choice made by a parent. Yes, but but I, I've just explained at some length face. what's wrong with a face covering. So you've, you've brought a child's uh, swimwear into the conversation well, as, as a counterpoint. So what's wrong with a child's exactly. swimwear? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's a choice. Why is a, is a parent allowed to do that? A choice or a company? But, but, but why is it wrong? Kind of why product? wouldn't Why wouldn't you do? Why wouldn't you want your three year old to be wearing a swimsuit at the beach? No, it's not a swimsuit. It's a two piece bikini. Or a two piece bikini at the beach. Then, yeah, I mean, yeah. We generally it's, let it's our kids choice. wander around without any clothes on when they were that age. I don't understand the point you think you're making. Well, I'm, I'm making not sure you do either. It's a choice. Everyone has. Well, stop! Stop saying it's a choice that. because you you've brought. Well, it is. That's why you don't no, understand. Okay, Layla. Here's the thing, right? I have explained at length thing. what is wrong with the face covering. You have mentioned yeah. a child's. For you, for you. No, but yes, for you, yes. It's wrong for you, not for another. Layla, another the thing. Woman. The thing is, you, you, you're going to go away. You think, because you don't understand it. Right. You don't understand a woman who chooses to wear this because it's not down to you. It's her choice yes. whether to wear a bikini or a burqa or a hijab. Well, which is why I don't think it should be banned. Which is why I don't think it should be bad. It's a choice to punch yourself in I the don't face, understand the discussion, But I don't understand the discussion. Uh, I know you don't. That's why I'm trying to help you. But you won't shut up for long why, enough for me to achieve that. Why is there an argument or a discussion or debate? No, no one's arguing yet. Only you. You're arguing with yourself now. I'm not. I'm saying See? why is there a discussion about a woman's choice, whether she dresses... That's not what the discussion's face. about. Well, it is. No, it, it isn't. Is the discussion is about whether or not the law bit, should address it. Layla, well, I, I'm, ter I'm, Layla, I'm terribly do. sorry. I'm going to draw a veil over this conversation until you've calmed down a bit. Ahmed is in Tower Hamlets. Ahmed, what would you like to say? Hi there, James. Um, yeah, I just uh, wanted to say, I'm, I'm, the whole banning of the uh, of the, uh, the I just I'm just scared of the fact that young Muslim males especially, they're going to turn to ISIS, because ISIS, I'm assuming, that's probably saying that um the the western world the, they don't accept you come to us and which is what, what's happening now I, I i know what you mean it I and mean, this is this is where the sort of far right or not even the far right anymore but the sort of lazy right 
and their Islamophobia and the uh, Islamo-fascist position combines to, to create an environment yeah. in which if I was trying to brainwash a young person into taking up terrorism uh, by telling them the West hates them just because they're Muslim, I, I'd just go on Twitter for 10 minutes and, and, and look at a lot of the feeds from people who, who describe themselves as patriots. There's all the proof you need. Um, and and yeah. also the idea that, you know, what, what's the difference between a nun and a, and a, and a w in a habit on a beach and a woman in a bucket? Well, nuns aren't trying to blow us up. So you see, mate, look, they think we're all terrorists already. They think we're all terrorists. And then they ban the burqa, like they've done in France, which has had a lot more exactly. problems than we've had. Uh, and that, again, becomes a, a reason why. But how do you do the opposite, then? How, I mean, I, I, Lely wasn't a great example, because even I couldn't get a word in edgeways. But how do you persuade people that it's a, it's a pretty oppressive practice without... You can't, it's Thing so is, tricky, isn't it? It's so tricky. Because if, if it's a law, you're right, it becomes a sledgehammer, and people can pick it up and use it on you. It is, but it is, it is quite tricky. But what, what Muslim women, especially, have to understand in the Quran, it doesn't actually say that you have to cover your face. It says that dress modestly, as in cover your hair. But the, the I don't. Do you know, oh, man, I, I think you've listened to the program for a while. You know, I don't really care about that. Yeah, because, no, no, I know you because really you, you tell me that, and someone else tells me this. And I don't really care what's in the book. I, yeah. I, I care what's on the streets of Britain, and I find this garment obnoxious on a level that, that is is. I, I mean, relevant to humanity. I thought that poor fella talking about dehumanising unintentionally made a brilliant point. What could be more dehumanising than hiding your humanity from your neighbour? But to ban it by law. Just creates more problems than it yeah, solves. It's just, it's just ridiculous by law. And yet, fifty-seven percent of the British people want it, and and you know that's democracy. Fifty-seven percent of the British people presumably don't want the police to be able to tell them what they can and can't wear. G give me a ring if you if you think it should be um, banned by law. You know, in, and, and explain to me how you can separate that belief from the belief that the police should also have the right to tell you what you can and can't wear. Ahmed, thank you very much. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three is the number that you need. James O'Brien on LBC. 12.33 is the time. More than half of Britain support a legal ban on, on the so-called burqa, a garment that's worn by a tiny proportion of the country, but which instills such deep, deep dislike and indeed disgust in the minds of so many, myself absolutely and completely included. It's the garment, not the woman wearing it, that I am disgusted by, but the practice offends me almost every fibre of my being. It's different from that burkini story in France. Incidentally, a court yesterday overturned that ban um, uh, in, a, in a sort of senior, superior legal decision. It's illegal because there were no proven risks of disruption to public order. A quite beautiful piece of law, that, but not as beautiful as ours. Our presumption of innocence until you're proven guilty. And this, this is how you can tell a bigot from a non-bigot. It's really, really easy, okay? What, what have you got against these people? Oh, they, they, they oppose British values. Okay. What, what, what are British values? Well, how about jurisprudence? How about, I know, how about the presumption of innocence until you're proven guilty? That's a wonderful British value that the terrorists, the Islamist fundamentalists, the so-called Islamic State, they despise the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. They despise trial by jury. They absolutely despise. They would just want the mullahs to be able to say who's guilty and who isn't. Okay? Like in North Korea. Just to prove that it doesn't have to involve religion. So, right. So British values include the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. And these people are attacking our British values and we need to defend them. How are we going to defend them? Are oh, we going to defend them by removing the presumption of innocence until you're proven guilty from Muslims? They're all presumed to be guilty. So, James, the difference between a nun in a habit on a beach in France and a Muslim woman in a burkini is that nuns aren't all trying to blow us up. Oh, wow. So all Muslims are now guilty by association with terrorism. Yeah, absolutely. That's the only way we can defend British values. What? The only way we can defend British values is by taking away the presumption of innocence, which is one of the most fundamental and beautiful British values of all. Right. Now, everyone who's not a bigot, even if they were previously in favour of this idea, or even if they were previously subscribing to the school of thought that uh, the burkini or the burqa ban were good ideas, everybody who's not a bigot now realises they were wrong. There's no, there's no middle ground here. There's no grey area. Oh, God, yeah, I actually want to defend British values, so I was wrong to think it was a good idea to dismantle the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. Then you've got your rump. Then you've got your... So now you've got the people putting their fingers in their ears and their eyes over their... their hands over their eyes, going, no, no, we must punish all Muslims. We must punish all Muslims. I love British values. Ah! 
Uh, but their head will explode. So they'll just get their Tesco laptop out, go back into mum's spare room, put on their dirty dressing gown and start sending tweets while touching themselves inappropriately. And that, that's the difference. Everyone else is a bigot. Nobody else is. You can see there's no earthly way we defend British values by undermining the presumption of innocence or or you don't. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Leslie's in Hampstead. Leslie, what would you like to say? Um, yeah, you know, I've, I've worked in, in um, central London. I've worked in Marble Arch and in Bayswater. Lived there as well. But you know, for years I've been been seeing veiled women, and I've, I've just treated them with, with uh, curiosity. But I think I think the problem now is 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 because of uh, terrorism. We, we we now need to see the faces of the individuals that are behind those veils. Why? Um, I mean, give an example. A young man walked down high street, um, an holiday resort, with a, a Spider-Man mask on his face. A tall man, but he, he appeared threatening, and you could see people sort of like reading away from him simply because. What about charity collectors people. dressed as Barney the dinosaur? Are we going to make them take their costumes off as well? No, it's not about the costume. It's, it's about covering it's the. It's face. all about we, the costume. We, we, uh, Didn't the terrorists in Four Lions actually did dress up as comedy charity characters? Mr. Blobby's finished, Leslie, in your world. Absolutely finished. Poor, uh, poor fellow's already struggling for work. We're not even going to uh, let him shake a bucket outside Sainsbury's anymore in case he's a terrorist. How do we differentiate, though? Because by, by saying that a Muslim can't wear a veil, we, we should also be saying that nobody else should be able to wear a veil. No, no, that's well. what you're saying. No, I'm suggesting, suggesting that we should... We, we should uh, no, you use Spider-Man as an example, so I'm pointing out that Mr. Blobby's finished in your world as well. So the law either applies to everybody or nobody. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We, we can't we, we can't say because we, we, we're so you can't you can't ban the burqa unless you ban Mr. Blobby and football mascots. No, I think we're going beyond the box here, are we? No, mate. You brought okay. Spider Man into it. Remember. <laughs> I was only using him as an example in the young Yeah, man. exactly. Man. An example of someone who you think should be told to take their mask off, but he was Spider-Man. So what's the difference between Spider-Man and Mr. Blobby? Or a football mascot? I know you rang in to support the ban on the burqa, but you must have now surely acknowledge... No, no, no. No, I don't, I don't support the ban. Well, no, I do support the ban on the burqa. I, I, I support... I, I, I know you did, but you can't now, face, unless you also support a ban, a ban on Mr. On Blobby. Yeah, well, well, then we have to get rid of Mr. Blobby, all charity collectors, all, all football mascots, anyone who covers their face in public. And, and to be honest with you, mate, not, not to be flippant or facetious, if I was a terrorist, I would not wear a burqa. I would dress up as Mr. Blobby, because of people like you. I guess you're right on that one. Mate, I appreciate your honesty. That proves you're not a bigot. Anybody else still listening to this thinking that there is a, a logical, moral or legal case to ban the burqa is just deliberately choosing to undermine that fundamental British value, the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. But I still hate it. 12.39 is the time. Fatima's in Hillingdon. Fatima, what's going on? Hello. Um, well, I wanted to give you my perspective as a Muslim and lady who wears a headscarf myself, that I definitely think it should be banned. And I think the British values are way too politically correct. It's very sweet, but it's too, you're all too, <laughs> you want to be too politically correct about this. Oh, let's let everyone do what they want. As a Muslim, I am telling you, okay, you should really, really, really take our opinion on this practicing Muslims. The only part, the only people that, you know, so-called Muslims that identify with um, covering their face or have that rule are people who have, you know, are extreme Muslims who identify with all these terrorist ideologies. They are exactly where ISIS comes from. You have to understand, you cannot allow people to cover their face. It's not part of Islam. No, 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 hang on. Only no, 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 no. You don't mean people. Who? You, you don't mean all people, Oh, do you? I mean Muslims. Sorry, yes, Muslims. exactly. So you just want a law yes. specifically for Muslim women? Yes. Okay. Can you Muslims think of any other want... recent examples from history of laws that specifically applied only to certain religions? No. Come on, you must be able to think of a few. Um, no. Well, imagine if you were a certain religion and there was a government that made you take something off or, or maybe wear something, like a badge. Can you think of one yet? Just a law that okay. was specific to a certain and, 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 and a singular religion. Um, I can't think of that no. right now. No. How, how, how old are you? Because I feel too heated about this right well, no, now. No, I mean, the um, Second, the second World War, uh, the rise of the Nazis, the persecution of the Jews, these are not things that slip your mind because you feel too heated. The only thing I, I can think of in the last hundred years where a law was brought in specifically to apply to one religion and not to another involved the Holocaust. I, and, and that's just but, me. I'm sure there are other examples, but can you think of one? 
No, but that's absolutely fine. But the example you've just given, they, the Jews weren't harming anyone at the time. Right well, now, no, 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 nor are the women, nor are the innocent. women that I walked past on the way home later tonight. And remember, the reason they got away with harming all of the Jews was because the politicians told the people that they were all a threat. So is your solution to allow people to carry on practicing extreme, you know, their extreme ideology? No, my, 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 my solution is to encourage people to take off this ridiculous garment. But if you do it by law, you have to apply that law equally to everybody. Otherwise, I, you're, I you're making, you have a different, no, 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 you, you have to understand what you're endorsing, Fatima. You're saying it's okay to have laws that only apply to Muslims. Now, we start with the face covering. You are a Muslim who doesn't wear a face covering. Tomorrow, we're going to bring in a law that actually applies to, to Muslims who don't wear face coverings. We're just going to insist that you stay in your house after seven o'clock in the evening. Yeah, well, then I would debate that, but... Uh, no, no, you can't that's... debate that because all of the terrorists are Muslims. And you're a Muslim, you can't prove to me you're not a terrorist, so you're not allowed out of your house. Uh, what can I say? Oh, sorry, James, I made a terrible mistake and I won't do it again. No, I didn't. Honestly, I really... I really all right, well, you're not allowed out of your house. I'm banning you as a Muslim from my show. I'm banning all Muslims from my show. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You think it's okay to have laws that only apply to Muslims? Okay, fine, so... Um, no, you're so banned from I the mean, show I, as a Muslim. I'm doing I, what you want. I'm bringing in laws I, just for Muslims. You're banned. You're not allowed to talk. Why are you still talking? I'm saying I, if I'm a Muslim, I'm not there for a terrorist. But if you are wearing a niqab or a face covering, oh, whatever sweet. you want to call it... No, you no, no, do, no, 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 that's you. You do identify with that ideology. I'm telling you, as a Muslim, those people are Wahhabi. Yeah, and here's someone from UKIP or the EDL who'll tell you that all Muslims are terrorists. And, and until they can prove that they're not, they need to sign a bill of rights. And you're singing from the same side of that as them. Okay, so we'll just carry on letting them doing what they're doing. No, no, no. Terrorism is illegal. Supporting terrorists is illegal. Uh, Sympathising is getting close to being illegal. All of these things are already covered by law. Hats are not illegal. Pants are not illegal. Trousers are not illegal. Shoes are not illegal. Although, in the case of adult crocs, I would be prepared to make an exception. None of these things are illegal. These are garments. If you want to make a garment illegal, it has to be illegal for everybody. Otherwise, the law only applies to people of a certain religion. And given that you identify as Muslim, to call for laws that only Muslims have to obey is not only ridiculous, Fatima, it's potentially suicidal. Well, unfortunately, that's the situation we're in right now, and they've dug them. No, unfortunately, no, no, you don't see it. You don't get to separate yourself from the Muslims wearing the masks in the eyes of the bigots, Fatima. You don't get to say, I'm one of the good ones, I'm not wearing a mask. You're a Muslim, you're guilty. <laughs> okay, fine. In that case, the only solution to be so politically correct is... Um, Why do you keep using everyone? the phrase politically correct? Because you are too politically correct. You don't, you don't even know what it means. Do I not? Okay, fine. I don't. So are you just assuming I'm uneducated? No, I'm just saying you're misusing the phrase. And Jeremy Corbyn misuses words. Doesn't mean he's uneducated. Tell me what you think politically correct means. So you're... you're no, no, you're, no. Just tell me what you think it means. In my opinion, is you don't want to tread on anyone's toes. You want to, um, you want to, uh, you know, you want to appease everyone. No, that's not what politically correct means at all. Okay, I, so I am describing the burqa right as as a despicable and disgusting garment that signifies the the oppression of women on a medieval I scale. Agree. How is that not yeah. How is that not wanting to tread on people's toes or cause offence? No, fair enough. Okay, so going back to the original point. No, I think you need to go back to your books, frankly. 12.44 is the time, and there you have it. That's where we are now. A Muslim woman calling for laws that only she would have to obey. Because today, she doesn't wear a mask, so she wouldn't have to obey that law. But once the door is open for laws that only apply to a specific religion, you don't get to choose anymore. Tomorrow, when it's a curfew, or tomorrow when it's wearing an identifying badge, or tomorrow when it's, uh, oh, you can't come in my shop, and there are politicians in this country who publicly say shopkeepers should be able to turn you away on the grounds of your sexuality or the grounds of your religion. And it will be you, Fatima, long before it's me. And yet you're now calling for it as well. Get rid of the garment. Get rid of it. I denigrate it. Absolutely demonize it. It's disgusting and wrong and horrible and oppressive and exploitative and, and misogynistic. But you can't use the law to do it because the law has to be blind and it has to apply equally to everybody. And the minute it only applies to your religion or my religion or her religion or his religion, that's it. The door's open. 
the fascists are rushing in. Yeah, and it's a phrase de jour, isn't it? We've coined it in the last few weeks, that notion of uh, punching ourselves in the face when we wake up in the morning. That call it just before the travel news. A few of you pointing out that that is exactly what you just heard, the sound of someone pu punching themselves in the face, a, a, a Muslim woman calling for laws that only Muslims have to obey. Because at the moment, she wouldn't have to obey it. She doesn't wear the veil. <laughs> Once you're allowed, though, to make laws in this country, this wonderful, beautiful country where the presumption of innocence until you're proven guilty and the uh, uh, Christian tradition of trying to love your neighbour is so entrenched and so much a part of us that it's astonishing to see how successfully some people are dismantling it now. Hate your neighbour, especially if they're Romanian. And uh, <laughs> presumption of innocence, yeah, not if you're a Muslim. So, I say it again, some people apparently have wax in their ears. It's a, I hate it. I see, I see the face veil on the streets of my town, all bits of it, and, and, and I, it, it, it repulses me. The, the piece of cloth repulses me. And the process by which any woman could have been persuaded to think that this was a good thing to do. Because there is a, a degree of choice involved. Of course there is. But there is no earthly way a woman came up with that idea. There just isn't. There is no earthly way it was a woman who decided that women should cover up. It was a man. Which is why I love the cartoon that I've just tweeted from my friend Miles, um, which shows two men, one, one a sort of uh, cliched looking Westerner and one a cliched looking Muller. And the Westerner is pulling off the burqa to reveal a girl in a, in a, in a, in a sort of pink uh, bikini and the Muller is pulling it back down again to cover her up completely. And then the Westerner goes, whoa, hey, bikini, whoa, burqa, bikini, burqa, bikini. The point is, it's men doing it all the time. And I'm a man and I'm doing it now. But I'm not focusing on women. And I'm not focusing on veils, and I'm not focusing on Muslims. I'm focusing on humans. And if you have a law that says humans can't cover their faces, it has to apply to all humans. Which does mean, strange though it may sound, that Mr. Blobby is going to be even less employed than he is at the moment. A fancy dress will essentially become... And this is the point, you almost wonder why the satirists bother. If you haven't seen Four Lions, you should. The Chris Morris is just, just brilliant. And they dress up as, like ducks, don't they? I can't remember precisely what... If you, the idea that if you were planning to commit a terrorist atrocity, you'd dress up like a cartoon Muslim. It's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, the best way to make sure that they're not trying to blow us up is to make them take off all their Muslim stuff. Oh, great. That's going to solve terrorism. Mem's in Hoddleston. Mem, what's going on? Uh, no, a lot. Just um, listening to you and chuckling to myself quite a lot because yeah. I say I agree with most of what you say. Um, and if you go back, let's say, 15 years to September the 11th of 2001, a lot of people around that time, um, conspiracists and otherwise, began to su suggest that, well, this is going to be the beginning of the erosion of civil liberties and the rise of fascist states uh, to come. Yes, of course uh, it is. But, but, yeah, but you it mean hard? Yes. It would be hard to, to deny that now, having seen what's going on in Western Europe, um, the attitude changes, and obviously the well, the civil liberties haven't been affected yet. They have in France, but 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 we're all right. No, I haven't lost any liberties. Well, no, but however, look at the ninety day ninety day uh, detention rule that came in force as a result of I think it was the seven seven bombings. You can't deny that it becomes a completely politicised. Uh, no, I can't deny uh, that. Thing. So, what I'm trying to say to you is that at the moment, I've been, I was born in this country, I'm 37 years old, I was brought up on a diet of liberal democracy. My education was a diet of liberal democracy because I studied history and I studied politics. So, the, the whole idea of liberal democracy being shoved down your throat and looking at the American model and, 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 and the British model as well and parliamentarian model, you, you kind of think to yourself, well, you brought me to what you said about what is politically correct. Yes. Well, well, what is politically correct other than what is politically accepted at a certain time? And if this becomes accepted, um, I have stated categorically that I don't believe that the burqa is a necessity. I don't think that it is even called upon. Uh, I think that there's a matter of interpretation as to at what degree of covering yourself is required. For within sure, but again, I, I, the, the, the only reason I ever say I don't care about that isn't isn't to be rude. It's simply to say no. that. For, for, I mean, it, I think the general received wisdom is that there's no Quranic requirement to do it, but that doesn't mean that if I really put my effort in, I could find a couple of verses that I could cobble together in a way that meant, yeah, there you well, go, there precisely, is. Precisely, precisely, but why waste your time? I mean, at the end of the day, banning the burqa is akin to enforcing the burqa. Yes, it is, isn't it? exactly the same yeah. thing. And, and it's not actually enforced at the moment. To. No, it's not. Not and by law. 
No, and the fact of the matter is, the only, and I agree with one of the callers previously that did say it is a matter of choice, because ultimately no person can force another to wear it, but we all well know well and true what the dynamics of a family are within yeah. different cultures. The, the, there will be, uh, you know, a, a kind of a dominance of the male within the Muslim family, but at the same time, you find that they don't wear it in the home. I mean, we're not just talking about the burqa, we're talking about the veil or anything. Sure. It's not required in the home. So when you talk about human organization to become to become human is to, to be able to connect with your fellow man and when we're on the street and we're walking past one another we don't really connect with one another we connect with one another in the home though because that is the most natural environment you can find well yeah but so, you're connecting with people you're already connected to well yes but then that that Nobody ever meets anybody new, and nobody ever becomes friends. No, that was your, your... I disagreed with the point you were making about passing in the street. I think you do connect with people when you're outside your home. Oh, you can. No, don't get me wrong. You can, but in the society that we live in nowadays, everybody's just looking at their iPhone, iPhone or whatever, looking for a Pokemon. I mean, it's become ridiculous. People do not engage with one another nowadays. And I feel that there is some... I mean, we're not having a discussion on the merit of the burqa, but I do feel that there is some merit in the concept, but not in the way that it's practiced, and not in this day and age and in this society. What's the merit in the concept, then? Uh, well, if you think about when it was when it was designed for, it was designed for when people travelled in caravans from one place to the other. Oh, I see what you mean. Sorry. Yeah, I, so there's like no that. there's no benefit for it in Britain in 2016. No, not at all. But you remove if you remove the choice, like I said, you're eroding that civil liberty, and then it's essentially the. And same do you know what we're doing? The Oddly, we're, we're we're pushing women into it. I imagine by you know by having conversations about banning it, and then dad or brother or mum can say you, you you see you know they're, they're trying to steal your culture they're trying to undermine your value you've got to wear it and then they tell us they're trying to steal our culture you see like great valuable things like the presumption of innocence until you're proven guilty but so many people happy to wave goodbye to that as long as it only applies to the brown people carl is in Leytonstone. carl what would you like to say yeah hi james um i, I think we also need to look at this in, in a wider context as well and that is that um different cultures develop in different directions and at different paces and it's not you know i don't believe it's in our <clears throat> kind of western values to impose values on other cultures <clears throat> if they want to adopt and assimilate or to uh, you swallowed a mosquito else, sorry about that i just had my breakfast, my <laughs> <late> breakfast. <laughs> it's always the way yeah and um so so i i think we we need to see it in that context and not impose and, and i think that the risk is if you try to uh squash an, uh, an ideology or, or in fact if you it's try not to even an ideology, ideology is it well or, or, or a, um, a way of thinking cultural of practice life, a cultural practice even then what happens is as you've just said it just becomes a bigger issue and then I, they fight against it i would ban it I, I would ban it across the board oddly i mean legally I, I wouldn't i wouldn't worry about the cultural practice you're describing patience you're saying you have to wait for enlightenment to occur christianity took you know a couple of thousand years you could argue islam's a much younger religion you have to wait for enlightenment to occur but i would ban it if the price was worth paying so if it didn't also involve the banning of balaclava helmets, how many EDL members call for a banning on the burqa while wearing their ludicrous little balaclavas and their ludicrous little face coats? So ban it all. But I don't think that's the price I want to pay. I don't want my civil liberties compromised. So I'm not going to support a ban on the civil liberties of a veil-wearing woman or man being compromised either. And that's it. That's what I meant about the binary. This is actually binary. You can't see that laws have to apply equally to everybody or they're not proper laws. Then you are choosing to be an ignorant bigot, which is completely your prerogative. And I, too, would not outlaw ignorant bigotry. Largely because I'd be out of a job if I had to. <laughs>